If you're looking to enter the realm of the PC editing master race and build yourself a high performing Mac destroying machine well within your budget, this will be the video for you. What's going on everybody? My name is Camilla for the UK21 Media. I make videos about filmmaking and improving your production quality. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Well, today's a little bit different. So I'm in a video in January where I built my now workhorse of a PC. And since then I've been getting a lot of questions about what parts people should get for video editing computers. So now we're here making this video. Okay, to start this off, I'm not a computer scientist or an expert. I'm basing things on my own research and experience. I'm gonna tell you the things to look out for when you're looking for a video editing PC, and I'll even link some stuff below to get the ball rolling and to help you know what you're looking for. I do highly recommend you head over to pcpartpicker.com with this knowledge to make sure that the components that you have chosen actually are compatible with each other. The last thing you want is for them to arrive and not actually working together. I'll leave a link below to my personal build, the one that I use for my 4K editing. It's actually really good and I have had no problems since then. I'm also able to run Premiere Pro and After Effects together, which is just great. It also games really well. I'll be able to run these titles without a single problem. So the first thing you wanna get in your PC build is the CPU. So the CPU is the brain of the computer and it carries out all the logic and processes that is required for your operating system and the software that you use. When looking at CPUs, look for the number of cores and threads that it has. The more the merrier and the faster in this case. Imagine having a bucket of water and you pierce a hole in it, water will come out of one stream, but if you pierce multiple holes, water can come out faster. It's basically the same thing with the amount of cores and threads that you have. More processes can be done at a quicker time. Mainstream editing software such as Premiere Pro rely heavily on CPU performance for previews and rendering. So if you're a Premiere Pro user, this is the thing you want to invest in the most. Unlike DaVinci Resolve, for example, which relies heavily on your GPU, your graphics processing unit. In terms of brands of CPU, there are two types, there's Intel and AMD. For the most part, AMD provides a better price to performance ratio as they give you more cores for the price that you pay, whereas in Intel, they actually give you higher performing cores. There are many options available in terms of performance. I'll leave this up to you and I'll leave some links below to different types. For my personal build, I have the Ryzen 7 3700 which has eight cores and 16 threads. The next thing you want to consider is the motherboard. So the motherboard is what everything will connect to in your PC and a good CPU will have a good motherboard to go with it. Now don't get me wrong, the motherboard won't directly affect the PC's performance, but it can limit or expand the connections and capacity of your PC. You also want to make sure that the motherboard supports your CPU. You're looking for LGA sockets for Intel and AM4 sockets for AMD. Motherboards come in different sizes with the most common size being the ATX. The smaller they are, the more limited on the expandability of the components that will go on your PC. When choosing a motherboard, it's important to look for this type of image. It'll show you how many USB slots it has, Ethernet connections, Wi-Fi, etc. Speaking of, you want to check if your motherboard has an inbuilt Wi-Fi antenna, otherwise you're gonna have to add that to your basket. Now, as well as price, here are a few things to consider when choosing a motherboard. Number one is the number of USB 3.0 slots it has. As an editor, you want fast connectors to transfer data to and from your computer. You're also going to be looking for this type of port on the motherboard to connect to the front panel. Next is USB-C compatibility. This is quite important to future-proof your PC, and if you have a case that has USB-C connections, you're going to be looking for USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports on the motherboard itself, which looks like this. Maximum RAM capacity. You might want to check if you actually need 128 gigabytes of RAM capacity on your motherboard, knowing that you probably will end up only filling 32 gigabytes of it. Prices do increase relating to this. Storage capacity. So depending on the hard drives or solid state drives you choose, you should check for M.2 SSD slots and the number of SATA slots that you want. More on this in a bit. And then finally, generation and compatibility. If you're looking at AMD and you choose to get a second generation Ryzen processor and in the future you may want to upgrade, you're going to be limited if you only get a second generation compatible motherboard. As a result, you're going to want to make sure that you get one that's for second and third gen so you're covered if you want to change later. The next thing to consider when building your PC is the graphics card or the GPU. So graphics cards can either make or break your budget as they're usually more expensive than your actual CPU. To cut to the chase, you don't need the most expensive and powerful GPU for video editing, especially if you're using Premiere. But you do need a decent one if you're editing on DaVinci Resolve. When looking at graphics cards, there's going to be a lot of numbers you're going to see. 
but the number you want to focus on is the VRAM, which is Video Random Access Memory. It's a bit like RAM, but for video. So if you're using DaVinci Resolve, you want to get a graphics card that has a minimum of six gigabytes of VRAM. Whereas Adobe recommends four gigabytes of VRAM with a minimum, absolute minimum of two gigabytes. I should mention that if you're going the Intel route, they have integrated graphics. And if you're only doing light editing work, you can arguably get away with this. However, you'll struggle with intense color grading, adding visual effects, and also using software like Adobe After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. Another thing if you're editing on Premiere Pro is that Premiere is optimized for NVIDIA graphics processing units. But an entry-level AMD RX 570 or an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super should be fine if you're just um, making YouTube videos with some effects and doing some color grading. This is based on people's research that are found with their builds and it seemed to be doing just fine for them. I chose for my 4K editing build the MSI GTX 1660 Ti, which has six gigabytes of VRAM. And for me, that was the best compromise between performance and price. But don't forget that if you want to remortgage your house and take out three credit card loans, Adobe recommends the Nvidia Quattro RTX 8000 as a solid choice. Onto RAM. So RAM stands for random access memory and in video editing terms, it ensures that your playback speed is as smooth as possible. Some people say that increasing your RAM increases your rendering speed and this is very marginal because your CPU is the thing that's doing all the processing and encoding. Adobe's website recommends 16 gigabytes of RAM for 1080p HD work but recommends 32 gigabytes of RAM for 4K editing and above. I'd go for the former if you're editing YouTube videos, social media videos, nothing too crazy. But if you're doing 4K editing, like to play Spotify, stream of videos and read the client's notes on Word, then I'll definitely go for the 32 gigabytes. But I think anything above 32 gigabytes is probably overkill. You should also look at the operating frequency of the RAM. Currently 3200 megahertz is the optimum. Number five is storage. Pay attention. If this is the slowest part of your computer, it will slow down the whole process of editing for you. And the reason for this this is because your video editing software has to reference the media from where it is stored. So if your storage system is slow, it's gonna slow down your entire editing process. For video editing, you want high capacity and fast speed. And there are currently two types of storage systems out there. There are hard disk drives, which are mechanically spinning disks, and there are solid state drives, which are basically electronic chips. And for solid state drives, there are two types. There are the M.2 ones, which are basically a chip and they go directly onto your motherboard. And then there are the SATA 2.5 inch ones that go to the back of your PC. PC. Using a traditional hard disk drive, you can get away with editing 1080p footage, but when you get to higher resolutions like 4K, you're gonna start getting some choppy footage. I had that problem with my initial laptop. When I started editing out of external SSD drives, I didn't have that problem. So yeah, I recommend if you're doing 4K editing and above to have an SSD drive. For most people, I recommend combining both the SSD and the HDD. I would have an SSD to have my operating system and my software as that makes sure that everything boots up quick. And then I'll have a hard disk drive where I keep all my files. For my setup, as I'm currently editing a documentary with 3.5, 0.5 terabytes of 4K footage. I need my pixels to load quick. I have an M.2 NVMe SSD which loads all my software and I have two SATA SSDs at the back of my computer which has all of my media. And then when I'm done with the footage, I like to dump it into one of these hard disk drives and then just throw it away. Let's not do that. <laughs> I'll leave links to all these drives below as well. So the sixth thing you wanna consider is the power supply. And it's very obvious what this does. It supplies power. My recommendation is to go to pcpartpicker.com, check how much wattage your build will actually have, and then add a little bit on top. For my setup, I think my wattage is gonna be like 300 watts. And I just got a 600 watt power supply because I might wanna add some more cooling to this system and some other drives. So I need to make sure I have enough power to supply to them. The last thing you wanna consider when getting a PC for video editing is the case and the cooling. So I put these together because they're quite similar, quite related, and also the case is probably the last thing you're gonna get. So um, let's get on it. We're looking for a case for your PC. You want to make sure that A, it has sufficient cooling in it. B, it has the front panel ports that you need and C has the facilities to fit all the components that you're going to fit into the computer. Bear in mind that if you want an optical drive space, you're going to end up paying a lot more as most cases don't really have that. Looking at the cooling of a case, you want to look at how many fans it has and also the direction of airflow. The basic rule of thumb is that you want the airflow to go from the front to the back or maybe from the back to the front, but have one direction of airflow. The NZXT case that I have has two exhaust fans at the back and it has grills at the front. So air will go in from the front 
and it'll just go out the back. Now the customization features in cases are crazy. You can get RGB lights, you a bunch of different functions. So I'll leave all of this up to you and leave some links below to some that I recommend. Now in terms of cooling, there are a couple of options. There are spinning blade fans that you can connect to a heatsink onto your CPU and there are also liquid cooling or AIO options. There are also more advanced cooling open loop systems that I don't really know much about but if you want to research those I'll leave some links below to that as well. Now from my experience and what I have read the fan provided for the AMD Ryzen processors is sufficient and for me it's worked really well. I haven't exceeded anything above 70 degrees when just doing video editing only. It does get quite hot when I start gaming on Ultra but my PC isn't really designed for that anyway so I'm probably going to have to update my cooling if I desire to play more Warzone. So if you find that your PC is going to get much hotter or you're going to overclock it in the future you definitely want to consider some extra methods of cooling. So yeah, that's all from me. I hope that helped you a lot. If it did, make sure to give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or DM me at DKD21Media on Instagram or my personal one at CamiSees. And if you wanna see more videos like these, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as that helps us out a lot and it helps you out a lot because you're gonna be notified when I make a new video. With all that said and done, I'll see you in the next one.